action. Okay, we moved around to the front of the set, and this is a black and white set, clearly. Um, it's in letterbox style. Don't worry about those black borders there. That's normal. This is TCM. Uh, a few notable things about this set is you'll see down here in a little window, it tells you what channel you're on. That's kind of cool because when you're if you're using the remote, you're not getting up to see what channel you're on. Instead of having an on-screen display like in a modern TV, it has this little drum and these numbers will change in this little window as you flip through the switches. You'll also notice that it has doors. So the lady of the house will be happy to see that you can cover up that ugly TV and have a pretty looking piece of furniture. Uh, let me get a little bit better light on that and you won't see that in the dark. There you go. I hope that's not that's coming across okay. Pretty sure that's a walnut finish. Okay. Turn that back off. It's got a little power indicator like this little red jewel. I, I like that. It's interesting, different colors. The the uh, the Zenus I think are green and the Magna boxes are red. And I can't remember, I think the I think the RCAs might be green too, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll open this back up. This picture is uh it's got very good linearity it's it's really set well it's got good uh, resolution you'll see that the line pairing is to a minimum it's got really good uh just overall performance is pretty darn good for a original picture tube if we come up to the top i'm going to show you some top things now again we have the channel being displayed this is if you were up here changing it this way and a little feature i don't know why for some reason you're too lazy to twist this knob like that, you could press this red button. I don't know why. I mean, you really got to be pretty lazy <laughs> to press this button. Or you could always use the, where'd it go? Uh, here it is. Or you could always use the clicker. So we will click to change the channel. Now ready, it's get ready for it. Here it comes, ready, and it's off. See that? That's how it turns off. Isn't that strange? But we're we don't want it off. We want it on again. Put it back on the channel that we were just watching. Um, also included in this control panel is the selection for speakers. Let me uh, get that some light on that. Hope you can see that. I have an external, an internal, and both. I mean, clearly you don't want to be on external. That's if you had separate external speakers attached to the back. Uh, over here, you have settings. Now, what's interesting about the way this volume works is you have three steps, but your overall volume is set up here. So what you do typically is you pick the volume you're comfortable with the highest level. Let's say that's as loud as you want to go. So that's how that would work, which is kind of neat because that way you can set this exactly where you want to be. I actually think I like that better than some some uh, electronically set remote volumes. I notice the steps are too big and you can't get exactly where you want this. You can uh, also included on this. Um, let's see how the picture looks. By the way, let's see how look at that picture. Oh, that's a nice set. I think this is a uh, designed by Salvador Dali. I'm pretty sure this is, oh, let's observe the linearity. Good way to test it real quick. When something scrolls up, what's this directed by? What's this name? If that stays constant as it rolls onto the top, you know you've got good linearity. If, even without a test pattern, you can do that when you have scrolling graphics. Look and see if the graphics gets narrower or wider as it goes up the screen. Anyway, let's continue with the talk at the top. Uh, I'm gonna get some light now so we can see what we're doing. Hope that's gonna work. Yeah. So we're gonna get off the TV now. I'm now in the auxiliary mode. So that's if I wanted to hook up a um, a cassette tape or a a CD player or something like that or an MP3 player, whatever you have. I think that's the right term, right? Okay, for audio, AM. Bench.com. 
typical I AM garbage. Uh, gas, it's got a uh, signal gas. strength indicator. You certainly, and this is a, a parable of the gospel. You go to FM. Oh, there you go. Sounds funny there. That's the FM mode, stereo mode, I should say. So, and again, you can still use the clicker so you can remotely control your stereo, which is kind of handy. And um, the balance on this, you'll see there's no balance. That's because on Magna boxes, they like to hide that right. No, not there. Take it back. Uh, maybe to this one. Nope. All right. Over here. Nope. Uh, can't be here. Okay. Well, I'm wrong. Um, this, the balance on this one, I think, must be the little two, two little pots on the back of the. Uh, stereo um, chassis that you can adjust left and right. Some Magna boxes have a hollow shaft there that you can go in there and tweak back and forth to adjust the balance. I might be thinking of tube sets. Elton John. I'm getting trolled if I play this too long because of the uh, copyright stuff. So we're going to go to that. Now what we've done is we set it in stereo. What stereo means is actually stereo phono. So now the phono is activated. So let's go turn the phonograph on. I'll just go ahead and close this up. We'll relocate over to the photo side. Uh, I guess I should have keyed this up. Typically what you would do is you would set a record up like that. Uh, right now, as you'll notice, by looking at the red light, the system's off. There's no power. Everything's shut down. As soon as you turn this, there's... These things can be kind of confusing to turn on. I mean, in some cases you can turn on with the treble control, like right here. Here's a master power switch right here. Listen to it click. Hear that? That turns the power on and off. And it says off there. Setting this to phono turns everything off, unless the stereo is running. Unless, I'm sorry, unless the phonograph's running. Or you can turn on the radio. Now watch, I'll turn it off with the treble. Okay, <laughs> it can be really confusing sometimes. A lot of people get confused on exactly how to operate these sets. But anyway, we'll go over here to the phonograph. It's all set and ready to go. And uh, if you'll notice, this is an LP, long playing record, stereo LP. This thing has the ability to run multiple types of things. Like it has a 16 RPM, 33, uh, 45, and a 78. Well, the 78s are really old records. 45s are those little bitty things with a big hole in them. And if you're going to run a 45, you'd use this adapter because of the big hole in the thing. Uh, the 16s, I'm not sure what that's about. I, I kind of know, but I'm not getting to it. And then we, but we have on a 33 and a third, so we're going to use that and we're going to play an album. The uh, All you have to do is uh, turn to auto, release. The arm will tap the record right there. That determines the size, and then you're good to go. Uh, I don't know if the volume is on this. Let me go back and see. Okay, there we go. As you, so if you see some of my other videos, I tend to play my Led Zeppelin. That's uh, Houses of the Holy, I think. So anyway, uh, or Dancing Days, I'm sorry, from uh, Physical Graffiti. And again, I can't play it too long, otherwise I'll get copyright infringements. So we'll just go ahead and turn it down. But this is a uh, Micromatic by Magnavox, the uh, turntable is. I really like Micromagnics, Ma Micromatics. I think they work better than pretty much any of the other automatic turntables out there. They're really robust, really well built. Um, I don't think I did anything to this one. I don't think I even lubricated it. It just worked just fine, so I didn't fool with it. Anyway, it'll finish out that table, that, that uh, record, and it'll turn itself off. But I'm going to go ahead and accelerate that to demonstrate it as though we'd gotten to the end of the record. And I'll go over there, nothing's there. Shut down, now the click. The, the power's completely shut down. So that's it, that's how it turns off. Now, 
I think I've demonstrated this on other record players, but for people who don't know how these things work, you can actually put three or maybe even four records. I wouldn't go any higher than three, but you could probably stack three LPs when you do this. You literally just put them like this. One's there, put another, put another, do that, and it will play them one after the other until they're all been, all been played. I think more than three is kind of pushing your luck, but it does work that way. It's kind of neat, so you can put three albums, three long playing albums, and you'll get a pretty good amount of music for a while. Anyway, that's my full demonstration. Oh, oh, I'll talk about the finish a little bit real quick. Um, when I got this thing, it was a wreck. The finish was completely alligator skinned up, like it just crinkled real badly. I ended up sanding it all off, sanding it all off. I ended up trying to stain this with some walnut stain as, as close to the original as I could get. Uh, I ended up just cleaning this all off. I don't think I need to stain this. And then I pre-finished the whole thing with a product called Tongue Oil. Uh, that's in a, you know, as opposed to a urethane or a shellac or any other modern. Tongue Oil goes on real easy. It's a little bit messy. But it's, it's totally foolproof. You really can't screw up tongue oil. You just wipe it on, and you wipe it off. And you, every time you do it, you just put more. Every time you do that, you put another coat on. And you wait. You wait 24 hours. You do it again, and it just makes a great finish. That's extremely durable, and extremely foolproof. You don't have to worry about a bug landing in it, or a piece of dust, or some screwing up, or it dripping, or anything. No, no, no. You just wipe it on, and they wax on, wax off, you know? It's like tongue oil on, tongue oil off, just like old Pat Morita would say. Anyway, that's an obscure reference to so many people get it. All right, very good. Thank you. That's all.